and you can hear me okay. All right, let's get started. Good morning, everyone. Um, are all of you guys here at UH Hilo for your very first semester? No returning students? Good. Okay. My name is Rick Murray. I'm the uh, director of campus security. And I'm here to talk to you guys today about uh, campus safety and uh, security. Are any of you guys residence hall residents? Okay, maybe a little more than half of you. All right. So we're recording this informational session because obviously there's uh, many more uh, new students than are in the room. So we'll make this available for the folks who weren't able to make it. Um, but welcome. Welcome to University of Wyatt Hilo. We're hoping that you guys are going to have a very productive uh, semester. And of course, we really want to uh, hope that everyone will have a very uh, safe and productive semester. Some of the things we're going to talk about uh, today are, well, campus security, how you contact campus security if you need to get a hold of us, um, the components of a crime. We're going to talk a little bit about the Clery Act, which is a uh, federal act that kind of uh, have some mandates on what campuses, uh, colleges and universities have to do as far as campus safety and security is concerned, as well as to give you some uh, crime information, uh, past crime information here at uh, the school, how to avoid becoming a victim, and some emergency preparedness information I'm not sure about the, the driving tips. <laughs> OK, so campus security, of course, the administration and the campus security office, we have a commitment to campus security and the safety of our faculty, staff, visitors, but most especially our students. Um, you guys' safety is very high. On our, on our radar. And so we're always trying to look at ways that we could uh, be better at keeping our student community uh, safe. So some of the things you should know is where the campus security office is. It's in the UCB building, the university classroom building. Uh, the office is 151. My office, the director's office, is 153 in the same building. My phone number there, 7644, if you guys need to reach me specifically as opposed to reaching campus security, you call that number. Campus security number should be very easy to remember. It is, uh, ends with 911. If you're using an office phone, an inner office phone, you just have to dial 7911. And then the extended number is 9747911. And you guys would be, uh, uh, it would be uh, wise to put that number in your, in your phone so that you uh, have it whenever the need might arise. OK, so on, on the, this campus, Campus security has a certain authority. We do not have the authority to arrest, right? So we're not going to come up to you and put handcuffs on you and say, hey, you're under arrest and we'll cart you off to jail. Um, but we do have the, the authority to detain and to cite. So if there's a violation that you can be cited for, campus security has the authority to do that. And they also have the authority to uh, detain. Now, to be honest with you, as far as the detaining goes, this is something that would almost 
almost never happen because, you know, the lion's share of our students are, are very uh, well-behaved citizens and wouldn't be getting in the kind of trouble that would cause them to be being detained by campus security. Um, some of our responsibilities are, well, one important responsibility is that we are what I like to call uh, the immediate responder. So when we think about uh, police, fire, ambulance, we think we call them like first responders, right? So if there's a medical emergency and we call for an ambulance and 10 or 15 minutes later the ambulance shows up or there's a fire and we call for the fire department or there's a crime or a potential crime and we call for the police, none of those guys are actually on campus. We have to wait for them to arrive before they can respond to whatever goes on. Campus security is your immediate responder. There's a medical situation. We're going to respond to that until EMS arrives. Same with a fire, same with a crime or a potential crime. So I like to say that we are what we call the immediate responders. Um, we write the initial incident reports on all of these types of things that might happen on campus. Um, we respond to any issues that have anything to do with campus safety and or security. We also enforce the parking regulations and we have a lot to do with emergency preparedness. So we'll talk more about emergency preparedness a little bit later, but that's also a very uh, important function of campus security. Okay, so the uh, function of the security office, one of the main functions is to make sure that the campus is compliant with what we call the Clery Act. Are any of you guys familiar with the Clery Act? Okay. So very briefly, uh, uh, there was a student uh, in uh, around 1990, Jean Clery, who was uh, hurt. She was uh, assaulted and actually murdered in her dorm room in uh, Lehigh, Pennsylvania. And what had happened was back in, at that time, campuses were not mandated to report crimes or, or criminal, um, criminal behavior to the public. So uh, Jane Clary's parents, after, after her murder, and really looking into this, had discovered that there had been uh, a number of assaults reported in the previous few years and that there were a number of safety uh, breaches at the campus that no one knew about. And they felt like, wow, if the parents had known that the level of safety was, was at that point, they might have made a decision to, t to send their uh, students somewhere else. So the uh, Clary Act, about five years later, went into, into law. And now campuses are mandated, one, to uh, keep a crime log of any uh, crimes that are reported on campus. Whether or not it turns out that that thing actually happened or someone was found to be responsible or guilty or whatever, if it was reported on campus, then we have an obligation to have that listed in our crime report. So, uh, and we have to make that available to anyone who wants that information. So to you, your parents, the general public, uh, anyone. 
And then we also have an obligation to put out what you call an annual security report. In our annual security report, we list all crimes or violations that occurred in the previous three years. So we're always reporting for the, the three prior years to the current year. And that is uh, mandated by uh, the, the Clery Act. Clery Act has uh, been in place now for about a good 20 years. And at least every other year, it gets uh, revised with uh, more uh, detailed mandates for the university as well as uh, campus security. So this uh, URL right here is the campus security website, excuse me, the campus security web page on the, on the school's website. And I really would hope that all of you guys would take the time to uh, take a look at the security page. It really is a wealth of information. There's almost never any time that a faculty, staff, student, or visitor asks me a question about campus security that the answer is not on the web page. So if you really want to have an understanding of how security works and the ways that it can benefit you and work for you, please take, take some time to uh, visit the website and then the security web page. Some of the things that you'll find is campus security program, our missions, our values. We have an emergency response guidebook. This guidebook actually give, will give you response information on various things that might happen. So if you witness a crime uh, being committed, or even if you just see a suspicious person, if you uh, see someone who might have been a victim of a sexual assault, if there's a fire, uh, a storm, a hurricane, a tsunami, if there's a shooting threat, a bomb threat, a uh, suspicious package, terroristic, terroristic threat. The Emergency Response Guidebook will give you basic details and how to respond to any one of those events. Now, we also have what we call the Emergency Response App. And on that paper that I gave all of you guys, if you look down in the middle and you'll see a URL, an emergency response app, you guys can download that app right into your cell phone. Uh, and what's going to happen is if you ever need that information, it doesn't depend on uh, internet connectivity. It doesn't all, if your phone is on, if, if it's on, you could have even lost your service, right? Maybe you didn't pay your phone bill, but that information is in your phone and you can hit on any of those topics and see just general guidelines of how to respond. So it talks about security crime prevention. It'll talk about the services that campus security provides. One of the major services that we provide here at UH Hilo is we offer an escort service what that means, a student, as, well, not just a student escort service, an escort service for any faculty, staff, or student. And what that means, that if for any reason, doesn't matter to us what the reason is, if for any reason you feel uncomfortable or unsafe going from one area of the campus to the other, going from your last class to your to your, your, your vehicle, going to the residence halls, leaving the residence hall, going to the parking lot, wherever. Because we don't know what all personal uh, uh, dealings that individuals might have going on. But if you feel unsafe for any reason, 
you can call the security office and ask for a security escort and a security officer will escort you from one point to another point on campus. And oftentimes, you know, say you wanted to go to the library and you call for an escort and we'll escort you to the library and two hours later, of course, you want to go back to your dorm room or back to the parking lot to your, your vehicle and we will do that. So it's um, very important that all of you guys realize these type of things because when something does happen and we're in the, the midst of a personal emergency or we have um, some other type of thing going on where we're uh, afraid for our own safety, it's hard to think about those things or to garner that information if it wasn't already back there somewhere. So just really remember that, that there's this thing called the campus escort service that whenever you feel unsafe on campus, you can rely on campus security to escort you from one area to the others. Of course, we'll talk about our sexual assault policy, the student code of conduct, uh, tips on how to be uh, safe, not just in the housing or the residence halls, but on the campus in general. Are you guys familiar with the missing student policy? So the missing student policy basically states that if there is a resident student who has gone missing, say that the roommate and the RA and, and, and it's been determined that, hey, this person would normally be here, they're gone, and we don't know where they're at. Then within 24 hours, we, uh, under the missing person policy, we have to uh, initiate a report and start, and start physically trying to find out where that person might be. Okay, so campus security, who do we work with? We work with everybody. We work with you, the students. We work with residence life, housing. We work with our faculty. We work with the other departments and we work with the community in general. Also, of course, we work with local law enforcement and the other first responders. Whether or not you, you see our security, like on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, you'll see our guys in a, in a kind of red polo shirt. And on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, you'll see them wearing a black uniform. But whatever they're wearing, you'll see on their shoulder, they'll have that patch. And so you'll know for sure that they're a campus security officer if they're wearing that patch. These are some of our officers. And this is our day shift crew. And you guys who um, are observant by two or three weeks into the semester, probably a lot of these faces will become very familiar to you. Okay, so if you want to report a crime or emergency, obviously you want to call campus security. Uh, uh, FBI, New York police, they came up with a, a statement about uh, 10 years ago. They said, if you see something, say something. I adopted that for campus security some years ago, and I'd like to uh, make sure that every faculty, staff, and student knows that campus safety, it really does start with you, right? Years that we've got thousands of students on campus, which means we have thousands of eyes, and faculty and staff. More often than not, it's going to be you who sees the suspicious activity or the potential crime or the crime in progress before one of us notices it. So if you see something, say something. And the way that you do that is by contacting campus security through the phone 
we have also a, another line that has an anonymous. So if you wanted to report something anonymously, you could do that via the phone. You could also use our silent witness web, uh, web, web page and send in a, a silent witness report. You could go to the security office in person and say, hey, I need to report this. And basically what I'm saying is that there's multiple ways to report something to campus security. And if you're not sure whether or not this is something that needs to be reported, report it. Because that's what we do. We look into things and if it's not much there, then we'll, we'll be able to determine that. But it's best to have someone uh, contact us so that we can look into it rather than to say, oh, it's probably nothing. Or even uh, worse, saying that I'm sure somebody else is going to call and report that. Better to have something reported four times than, than no times, right? One of the features that we have on the campus is the, what, what I call the blue phones, the emergency blue light phones. And you guys see these phones uh, stations around the campus, and it has this red dot in the middle. Another way to contact campus security is you go to that emergency phone, and you just touch the red button. And you wait about maybe six or seven seconds, and campus security will be on the line. Now you got to be careful. You don't want to push the button and just hold it because then it needs to, it has to be a, like a back and forth, right? So it's like if you guys are used to a walkie-talkie or two-way radio, you can't hear if you got the button engaged. Kind of the same way with those phones. So there's like uh, at least 30 of these phones spread throughout the campus. So you don't have to reach in your pocket for your cell phone. You don't have to to uh, dial a number, all you have to do is touch the red button and you're talking to campus security. So that's, that's it right there. There's, I'm sure to you guys already that looks familiar. You've seen that, that, that phone right there that says emergency or something like that on our campus, right? I already talked about silent witness and anonymous reporting. So uh, those are things, again, that if you go to the security web page, it will explain to you in detail how you go about doing uh, a uh, silent witness report online and submitting it to security. And as a matter of fact, all silent witness reports come directly to me. If you want to do an anonymous report via the phone, it's going to go directly to our control room and the campus security uh, dispatch office. So just briefly, we want to talk about uh, our philosophy on, on crimes that happen on campus. And when I talk about crimes, I don't want you guys to get uh, really fearful like that this is a place where there's these major crimes happen because there's a lot of crime categories. If someone, if someone stole your cell phone, that's a crime, right? Or your, or your laptop. Uh, or someone keyed somebody's car. Uh, but let's think about what actually makes a crime possible, right? First of all, a person has to have the desire to commit a crime, right? And then they have to have the ability, right? Everybody can't hotwire a car, right? So you can have the desire to steal a car, but if you don't know how to do it, it's not going to get much further than that. So the desire, the ability, and then the opportunity. So out of those three things, which one of those things do you believe that you have control over? Opportunity. Exactly, right? We can't control someone's desire to 
do harm, and we can't control their skill and ability, but we certainly can minimize the opportunity. So what are some of the ways that we might minimize the, opportu uh, the, the opportunity for someone to steal something out of our room in the residence hall? Lock, keep your door locked. Keep windows closed and locked. Bring your items. Keep them out of sight. Mark maybe your items. Don't uh, don't lend out your 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 access, your key. Right? Want to minimize the opportunity. That's what we're asking you to do, campus security. That's what we're asking you to do. And that's what we're going to do also. The ways we're going to minimize the, the opportunity, are we're going to have uh, staggered security patrols. We've got um, a camera system of almost 300 cameras throughout the common areas of the campus. We have the emergency phones. We have it set up that you guys can either uh, email or call in any suspicious activity that you might see. All of these things will help us to minimize the opportunity of someone committing a crime on this campus. Now, sorry to say, by the time you guys leave here, at the end of the semester, I am sure you all will know of a couple of crimes that have been committed because as well as 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 well as we will try to do at minimizing opportunity and minimizing crime we kind of live in a world where crime does exist but we want to make sure that we do everything in our uh, every everything that we can possibly do to make sure that personally we give ourselves uh, the best chance of not being a victim of one of those crimes. Okay, so <clears throat> getting back to the annual security report that is mandated by uh, the Gene Cleary Act. Uh, I told you we're mandated to report the crimes on campus for the uh, past three years but we're also mandated to report any crimes that have been committed even on our areas that connect to the campus. So it's the campus, the sidewalk, the street, and then the sidewalk across the street. So um, I say that to say that even if somebody if, if you were technically not on the campus, say you say, okay, I'm gonna walk across the street, across uh, Lonnie Cowler, so now I'm technically not on the campus. Uh, but if something happened over there, we would be just as uh, mandated to report that as we would be if it happened right in this room. Okay, so when we do report, obviously we report to HPD, local law enforcement. We are mandated, just like HPD, to uh, collect and store those reports for a number, actually uh, incident reports and crimes is for uh, seven years on, on, on the campus. So what do you guys think some of the biggest crimes on this campus might be? Well, when I say biggest, excuse me, what do you think some of the most prevalent crimes on this campus might be? Theft. Right. Underage drinking. Underage drinking, yeah. What else? Smoking. I think smoking would come more under under the guise of a uh, a uh, campus violation. I don't think that it would be considered 
a crime in the sense that underage drinking is, right? If you're under if you're drinking and you're and you're and you're underage, the police could come to you and they say they could write you a citation or they could take you in and say, hey, you're guilty. I, I don't know that that would happen uh, for uh, smoking on campus, but it's certainly against the policy of the school to be uh, smoking on campus. So the things that, that we see the most are cell phones, laptops, bicycles, mopeds. So everybody has a cell phone. Probably everybody has a laptop. But if you got a bicycle, a moped, please make sure that you lock it with a good lock on a daily basis. No matter how safe it might seem you get used to be in the area, you kind of know everyone, or you feel like you know everyone, and no one's going to, uh, you know, would, would dare take this from me. But I will tell you with 100% assurity, if you uh, get in the habit of leaving a bicycle or a moped unlocked on this campus, um, I mean, you could get by with that maybe once or twice, but the eventuality would be probably that it would get stolen. So just make sure that you uh, protect your property as best you can. Let me ask you guys, I want to have a, a, little bit of, uh, a little bit of back and forth here, because I got a lot of information, and like I said, all of this information is on the security webpage. Are there any safety and security concerns or questions that you guys might have that um, you want to uh, ask about? Because it might be better for me to be able to answer what's on your mind than to just to give you a bunch of information and not touch on that. So, any questions? Yes? How often do break-ins happen if you lock your door? Never. Never? <laughs> if you lock your door? Uh, almost, well, that's, that would, you know, almost never, certainly. You, you know, uh, we very seldom have a situation where, you know, if you live in an apartment, right, you live in an apartment building, whatever, and, and someone physically broke into your, you know, they, they uh, busted through the lock, broke into your apartment. Uh, that type of crime would almost never happen on this campus. What generally what happened is one or two things. Either the door is left unlocked, someone else has the key, had access, or even if you do live on the first floor and you get in the habit of leaving your, locking your door but leaving your window open with the jealousies you know, open, well then that's, uh, that would be an easy way for someone to come in and uh, into your room. But even with that, I would say that that would still be a rare occurrence. Any other questions? Yes. Yes. Yeah. If you, especially if you have like the butterfly flip uh, seat, uh, it would be it would be advisable to uh, remove the seat. Uh, the the front tire, you know, you can get by with uh, wheeling your, your your chain or your cable through the front tire also. But if you've got that that flip butterfly seat, yeah, you might want to get in the habit of taking it with you. Uh, they they do go, and especially, I mean, you know. If it's a, a, a very, very nice seat. So what do you guys think? Do you think that, that the University of Hawaii here at Hilo is basically a safe place to live? I believe it is. I believe it's one of the safest places that one could consider living. 
But at the same time, we do live in a day and age where there's no place that is completely safe, right? So how we make it even more safe is by taking whatever steps that we can take to make it safe. Now we talked about our personal items. What steps can we take to make it, uh, to make the campus and or the residence life area safer in general, as far as, as personally safe? So one of the things that I would hope that you guys would, would, would uh, get in the habit of doing, and you can call security or you can report to your resident uh, advisors, your, your, uh, someone in, in, in the residence life area. But when you see suspicious activity, or even once you've been around for more than a month, you're going you're gonna to be able now to ascertain if someone is belongs in the area or doesn't. Now, of course, you guys bring your friends and all of that. But when you see folks lurking around and they're by themselves and they're not with one of you, uh, those are things that you want to bring to someone's attention. Because uh, it is an open campus. It is technically open to the public. But we don't allow people to loiter. And what we consider loitering to be is if someone is in a place, in a particular place, for no apparent purpose, right? So a person could be walking through, that's fine. But if they're hanging around, hanging around, and they, act, and they don't belong, they're not a member of our community, you want to bring that to somebody's attention. One thing I would like you guys to, to do, if you guys can do this before today is over, that emergency guide, that emergency guide app that I talked to you about, I really would like to see you guys download that into your phone. It kind of looks like this. And if uh, just by going, going through some of, the, uh, some of the topics, like when to report an emergency, a crime in progress, it has a list of emergency contacts, uh, who you contact in various situations. Um, how to respond to medical emergencies, fire, earthquake, hurricane, tsunami, hazardous material, so forth and so on, sexual assault, workplace violence, active shooter threat, um, civil disturbance and, and, and uh, labor strikes, has a campus map, and it's all right there. All you have to do is you just touch on the whatever the topic is, and it will open up and give you basic information of how you should respond. So for instance, if there's a fire in a building, a lot of times we might get panicked because we're not often around fires that are somewhat out of control or getting out of control. But it will remind you about the fire extinguisher, where fire extinguishers are located at basically how you use a fire extinguisher. If someone, a fire catches to uh, an article of clothing, you know, we, you hear people talk about stop, drop, and roll. Basic information. It's not, it's not you know, like high-tech fire, you know, uh, firefighting information, but just basic information of how to keep yourself safe in that situation. And the same with storms and floods and hurricanes and tsunamis, uh, suspicious folks, all of that. It's really good to have that information at your fingertips because I guarantee you, I mean, we have the information. It's printed. It's on the website and all of that. But when things happen, you know, you're not going to think to go to the website. You're not going to think to go to 
the book that's in the RA's office, you're going to be relying on whatever you have that's right there in front of you. And uh, what you guys, if I know anything, I know that you guys always have your cell phones within an arm's reach, right? <laughs> OK. Any other questions? OK, so what, one thing that I would like to do, I want to pass this around. These are what I call safety whistles. And uh, each one of these whistles, there's two types. They both have, say, the University of Hawaii at Hilo. They both have the campus security number on them. Uh, there's, a little, uh, there's a little light that each of them have. This one, you have to pull out the tab. And so if you put this on your keychain, if you get in any kind of trouble, yeah, you know, blow your whistle, call campus security. Maybe this will just remind you. Yeah, campus security is in my phone. Let me let me hit that. So I want to I want to pass this around. You guys take whichever one you want. If you can't decide, then go ahead and take both. <laughs> okay. And another thing I want to leave you guys with is well, I'll just put these here, and then you can come up and get one yourself. These are lanyards. These are breakaway lan lanyards. So you can't be, if someone were to, you know, chase you, it's not a lanyard that, that you can get, you know, uh, have someone strangle you with your own lanyard, right? So these lanyards, what, what do they say? They say the University of Hawaii at Hilo, and it just reminds us, it says, be aware, be alert, be safe. It also has the campus security number. So if you guys want to come up, get a lanyard, make sure you take a whistle. Remember, campus security office is in the UCB building. Remember about anonymous reporting. Uh, remember there's a silent witness reporting, right? Please take a look at the security page on the UH website. If you see something, say something. Any questions? You guys have, a, yeah. Um, I actually have one. Sure. Let's say um, emergency does arise, like either yourself or someone else gets injured, and needs something as silly as tripping down the stairs. Um, medical emergency. Medical emergency, yeah. exactly. Would it be, it's always going to be best to contact campus security or contact Good question. That's a good question. So the other thing that campus security is, besides the immediate responder, they're also the liaison to the first responders. So whenever you call 911, you should also call campus security. There's many buildings on this campus, right? And when the ambulance comes or the police come and you tell them they, they don't know the layout of this campus like we will come to know it, right? And you say, yeah, I'm in the, I'm in the K building. And the police get here and they're riding around. Campus security's responsibility is to meet the first responder at the best at the most uh, efficient uh, entrance point and guide them to wherever that emergency is. So not only are we the immediate responder who's responding until they get there, but it's also our responsibility to get them to that particular spot when they arrive. So like right now, we're in in room 301 of the campus center, right? If you called 911 and said, hey, you know, this guy, he had a heart attack. He's in room 301 at the campus center. Ambulance could be on this campus for 10, 12 minutes before they could figure out that this is the spot. So yes, you want to call 911 first and then call campus security. If it doesn't rise to the level, if, if a person's health and safety is not 
directly threatened, then you want to call campus security and then we can make an assessment whether or not we want to call uh, the first responders. But when someone is hurt or in imminent danger, yes, you call 911 um, uh, first and then if you, if, uh, you would do us the, the favor of also alerting campus security so that we can do our job. Okay, guys, look, I really, I really hope that you guys have a very, very safe semester. Of course, I, I want you guys to be productive, too, and get all uh, uh, really good grades. And the other thing that I kind of hope is that I don't get to know you too well during the semester. So you guys to see me, you remember me, wave, and that's fine, and I'll wave too. But, um, you know, just uh, try to stay within the rules and the regulations of the, of the campus because that also is important to keeping you safe. If you operate on a daily basis within the guidelines that the uh, uh, student services and, and housing put for, forth, then you have a much better chance of keeping yourself safe through the semester. All right? Have a good afternoon. Please don't forget to come up here and get a lanyard. All right? Thank you, guys.